I finally read these books that were on my TBR forever. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video, I'm going to talk about all the books I have read that have been on my TBR for a very long time. For some reason, I just kept putting them off, mostly because I worried if they were going to live up to the hype or if these books were going to be like the last books I read from my favorite authors before they write a new one. I don't know if you guys do this, but whenever my favorite author puts out a book, I'm very hesitant to read it right away because I know that the next book that they're going to write is going to be in a year or so. So I kind of always just want to have some books on my TBR or on my shelf. So the first book that I did read is this one called A Certain Appeal by Vanessa King. Now I picked this book up last year and it was released last year near the fall time. This one is essentially a Jane Austen retelling but burlesque theme. So our heroine is a burlesque dancer by night and then in day she has like this very professional career and then she during her like dance session meets our hero who is like very stiff. He's a Darcy and he has a lot of prejudice against her because of how she performs every night and what it could possibly represent. And then he says a comment and she hears it and then she thinks that he's just a horrible person. Now I put this book off mostly because I didn't really hear too many people talking about this book and I just had no interest in reading it. But then when I was reading it, I thought it was very slow. I thought that the pacing was just completely off. I felt like it was boring a lot of times. I felt like our characters were just so unlikable in some aspects. I also didn't really care about burlesque dancing, so it definitely lost a lot of my interest in the book from earlier on. And I felt that I had to keep pushing myself consistently to keep reading this novel. So I ultimately gave this one a two out of five stars and I actually had to DNF this one. And so far, this is only Vanessa King's like only novel published. And I don't think she has any plans to publish a new one yet. But hopefully, maybe she does. And then maybe I'll give her another shot. So the next book that I did pick up is this one from Sophie Kinsella called Love Your Life. Now this one was probably published two and a half years ago now. I was putting it off because I really don't want to have a Sophie Kinsella drought. I always like to have one Sophie Kinsella novel on my shelf so that I can have something to look for to when I'm in the mood for a romantic comedy. Sophie Kinsella is one of my favorite authors because her romantic comedy novels are actually genuinely funny to me. It's my sense of humor and it just makes me laugh a lot. So Love Your Life essentially involves our heroine who is a writer. She decides to go to a writer's retreat. The writer's retreat is really weird because they can't tell each other their real name or what they essentially actually do in the country that they're from and like they, they don't share personal details. So she has this whirlwind romance with our hero and you know sparks fly and they just hit it off and they want to continue the relationship once they get back to the home country that they're both from and of course it's like Britain. So they see each other again and they're trying to hold on to like the magical moments that they had while they were on that writer's retreat but they quickly realize how different they are and they quickly realize that maybe the writer's retreat was just too romantic and they were wearing rose-colored glasses the whole entire time and they were never right for each other and they kind of go head to head on a lot of things that are really important to them and it was just kind of very difficult to watch these two characters force themselves to be in a loving relationship. I gave this one a two out of five stars. It was definitely very disappointing for me because I rarely give really low ratings for Sophie Kinsella novels, but this one I just didn't want these two characters to be together at all, mostly because they were just not right for each other. The next book that I did pick up is this one called Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. Now everybody and their moms on booktube have been kind of talking about this book. I like I say that as in it's like really popular but it's a fairly popular YA contemporary romance novel that I've heard a lot of big booktubers talk about and that they're very very excited about. Now this one essentially follows our female heroine who had a mother who really liked the romantic comedy movies from the early 1990s and the 2000s. There are a lot of romance movie references in this book so if you guys are a big fan of romantic comedies then you would enjoy this one because they literally quote so many different movies and one of her favorite movies is actually Bridget Jones Diary which is one of my favorite movies so I like that aspect of it but essentially our heroine is looking for a romance herself 
herself after watching all these movies. So when her childhood crush moves back into the town that she currently lives in, she enlists the help of the boy next door for him to help reintroduce her to him. And he's just kind of being like the wingman in the situation. But like, there's something different about the boy next door now. He's kind of like grown out of his shell and he's kind of become like the life of the party. And it's someone that she never thought that he could be. And now her feelings are conflicted between the boy next door and also the childhood crush coming back into her life. So it's kind of like a love triangle situation, but we kind of already know which one she's going to pick. Overall, I gave this one a three out of five stars. It was an okay book. But I was just kind of waiting for her to wake up and to choose the guy that we know that she's going to choose. So it was just kind of disappointing because it was a little bit slow and it was a little bit hard to continue reading when you know that she's consistently making the wrong choice because she's changing herself into someone that she's not for a boy. The next book that I did pick up is this one called The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. This one came out last year and I got an art copy of it. I just never got around to reading it because I was just really worried about Christina Lauren's books. So this one is not for me. This one involves our heroine who is participating in a lab experiment where her DNA gets tested and then she gets matched with her supposed like perfect match because the app has this whole science program behind it and like they can find your soulmate. So she ends up being a, like a 100% perfect match with one of the curators of like the organization, the company. And this is really important to them because they can use this love story as like a publicity piece so that when the company has their IPO, they can potentially be like a really big company in the industry. So they're really riding hard on this. But the, unfortunately for these two characters is that they kind of started off on the wrong foot. They don't really like each other. It's an enemies to lovers romance. Our hero is very stoic. He's very intelligent. He's very reserved. And our heroine is completely different. Our hero tends to put his foot in his mouth a lot of the times. So he gets himself into a lot of trouble from the things that he says because it's kind of can be depicted as offensive towards her and so they reluctantly agree to go on a lot of dates and to see if they are a good match. The company says they are but like can their hearts say they are? So essentially this one was not for me mostly because there was a lot of science jargon in the first part of the book. The second bit that I didn't like about this book is that once you kind of add a layer of science into romance novels I find like that takes out a lot of the magic of romance when science tries to explain love, I find that so boring. Like, because the whole idea is that it's brain chemistry, it's the atmosphere, it's the environment, it's the situation that has brought these two people together and that what makes a really good romance novel in my opinion but once you kind of have like the logical aspects of it and forcing these two people who actually didn't really like each other in the first place to be with each other it's really hard. I also didn't feel like that there was a lot of chemistry between our two characters too as well so that was really hard to read too as well. So overall gave this one a three out of five stars. The ending was definitely not what I was expecting and it kind of left an unfinished feeling in my head when I finished reading it. So the last book that I did read that was on my TBR for a long time was this one called Truth, Flies, and Second Dates. Now this one's from Mary Janus Davidson. She writes a lot of wacky novels. So she was really popular for writing urban fiction novels back in the early 2000s. And if you haven't picked up a Mary Janus Davidson novel yet, it's going to be kind of really hard for you to stomach because her writing style is very zany. It's very different. It's eccentric but it's also really, really funny. Um, so this one is book number three in her series. I forgot what the series is called. So the series is called The Danger Series and it essentially involves our heroine who is a pilot and she is just kind of running away from her problems because of this one gruesome, horrific event that happened in her high school year. So she leaves the town, she studies to become a pilot, and now she's happy with her life, or so she thinks, because one flight leads her back to the hometown that she's grown up in, and then it leads her into this like whole situation, a whole mess, where it brings back bad memories. Essentially, this one is kind of like a romantic thriller, 
I didn't, I couldn't even tell from this cover because it looks so romantic comedy and like the Danger series. The second book that I read that I really, really did enjoy too as well was not romantic thriller. So this was took me off by surprise when we realized that our heroine's best friend was actually like murdered in this horrific way. And now they still don't know who the killer is. And like they're trying to hunt down the killer. And essentially our heroine is in danger because she re-entered back into the town. And now she's receiving a lot of death threats from everybody around her. Because they think that it was her fault that her best friend got murdered. And then our hero is I think like the city's coroner. And he does a lot of like research into the case. And he suspects that the heroine is actually the killer. And then afterwards it leads into this like whole mess because our hero is attracted to her and our hero's kind of spiraling because he's like why am I attracted to a killer so overall this one was really good I really really enjoyed it I gave this one a four and a half out of five stars I kind of just flew right through it it was so funny it was so hilarious I was snickering through like many many chapters I really wanted to figure out who was the real killer of the best friend I wanted to dive deeper into our heroine's life because essentially our heroine had a history of drug abuse and alcoholism I think too as well because after that really gruesome horrific incident she had to find coping mechanisms and unfortunately for her they were not safe coping mechanisms so it was really nice to kind of like watch her succeed and kind of um, live up to the potential of her life without letting drugs take over her life so it was very different from seeing our cookie cutter heroines from my previous romance novels that i was reading so i definitely recommend you check this one out i'm reading book number one in the danger series right now and it's kind of taken me a long time mostly because i'm busy with my life but i really like the danger series so hopefully you guys check this out i know it has a lot of low ratings on goodreads and i'm giving it a really high rating but kind of like if you like really wacky zany stories maybe this one's for you and maybe you'll like it as much as I did but anyways that is it for all the books I have read that were on my TBR for a very long time and I finally bit the bullet and read them hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys again next time in a new one bye